Reporting for Heart Rhythm TV, I'm Meg Dandy, and I'm joined by Dr. Aiden from University of Ottawa, Canada, and we're just coming off of the very first late-breaking clinical trial session on CIEDs. Dr. Aiden, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, the pleasure is ours. So, talking about the Barrier Protect trial that you presented, walk us through the main findings of, of the study and, and the implications in clinical practice that you see from it. Of course. So, you know, uh, infection is one of the most concerning uh, complications of the device implants. It causes significant mortality, morbidity, and also increased health healthcare costs. So steps taken to prevent infection, I think, will have a, a very meaningful impact uh, on the device implant procedures. So we wanted to test the effect of an iodine impregnated barrier uh, um, on reducing the device infections in this study. This is a randomized controlled study and it involves 418 patients in total who were randomized to a barrier arm, which we put a barrier on the skin before we do the incision, and then a no barrier arm, which we did not put a, a barrier on the skin uh, before the incision. And comparing this to non-CIED procedures, historically, how favorable has the data been for the iodine impregnated barrier? And why should we think that for CIEDs, especially for recurrent procedures with a, with a capsulized pocket, why should we think about this differently? Of course. So, you know, this barrier drapes uh, had uh, some uh, studies done in various other surgeries in the past. Uh, and the results are a bit surprising and maybe a bit counterintuitive. Uh, and uh, a meta-analysis, for example, um, shows that non-iodine impregnated barrier drapes actually increases the risk of infection for other surgeries. Uh, and iodine impregnated drapes uh, had no effect on the device infections. But we should remember that those uh, are old, old trials and also they don't have any CIED patients. So we think that this is worth to investigate because we think that the device infections with an established capsule is very different because there is a, a foreign material there, there is a biofilm formation, there is a, again a capsule formation and usually the hardware becomes in contact with the skin during the procedure. So we, we thought that the barrier application on the skin before the procedure will reduce the contamination from the skin and also will reduce the device infections. That's absolutely sound arguments to think about uh, CIEDs a little bit differently than any other surgical procedure. Now, in the study, you did do swabs at the end of the procedure. How do you think that translates or might translate in larger trials for, for actual infections downstream? And uh, how do you see these patient populations differently for brand new uh, CIED implant versus repeat infections? And do you think one of those groups might benefit more? Of course. So again, as I said, we think that the infections are different in patients with established capsule, which means that those patients had already uh, another procedure in the past and having second or subsequent procedures. Um, yeah. Our primary endpoint was the culture, the swap culture positivity. Uh, and we selected the, this, this primary endpoint mainly because uh, some studies, small studies in the past, has shown that uh, actually the uh, positive swap culture is quite common in device patients between 21 to 47 percent and uh, up to 7.5 percent of those patients develop device infection with the same bacteria. So we thought that if we can reduce the positive swaps then there may be an effect on reducing the infections. Uh, and actually, the study showed that uh, with the barrier application, there has been a 58% reduction in this primary endpoint. Uh, with the barrier, the swap positivity was 10.2%, and without the barrier, it was 21%. That's really impressive, and, and especially as we're seeing an increase in device infections, we know extractions are very high risk procedures with a lot of morbidity, mortality. Then you always have to balance the comorbidities of the patient with the impending immediate morbidity and mortality from device infection. So I think anything to prevent infections is exactly. definitely, from our patient's clinical outcome standpoint, very important. And also from a cost effectiveness standpoint, you know, hospitalizations, extractions, the tools involved and uh, the risk involved, so uh, comment a little bit for us on, on the cost effectiveness of, of, course, of this of uh, course, technology. Of course. And also I would like to emphasize that in our study there is also a reduction in infection too. 
So in barrier group, there was zero infections, and in no barrier group, there were four infections. Wow. So the cost effectiveness, this is a very cheap and uh, easy to applicate uh, material, right? It's, the Canadian cost is around maybe between two to four dollars. Uh, well, yeah. Again, the device infection is a, a very concerning uh, complication of the device implant. So anything, uh, if can be done to reduce it even more, this uh, will have a big impact on the, on the healthcare system for sure. So it sounds like a win-win uh, potential uh, we think so. solution. Yes. And, and yes, we think so. And we already changed our practice at the, at the Otto Heart Institute, yes. and we are now using this barrier drapes uh, for all of our patients. Excellent. We're excited for the implications for the global EP community from the study. And thank you for your work, and thank you for talking to us uh, about the study as well. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course. And to our viewers, Continue to follow us on YouTube and Twitter for exclusive late-breaking clinical trial coverage here at HRS 2024. Keep watching.